I, Mike, let's just start with the most pressing. Uh, th- this is a question that we get asked all the time. Where is Shelly Miscavige? And we get these, correct, but we get this question all the time. Like people started hashtag, where is Shelly? Where is the wife at a place called CST? Is that right, Mike? CST? Yes, yes. And what, Church ex- of Spiritual Technology. And tell people what that is. It's the organization created to archive for all time and eternity the works of L. Ron Hubbard, the in- incredibly invaluable works of L. Ron Hubbard, so that future generations and future races and future entities in the universe will have this incredibly valuable information available to them. And so the staff members there at this place, and this is in Arrowhead, California? Yeah, this, which is in San Bernardino County. It's up on the top of the hills there, up by the ski areas, Lake Arrowhead or near Lake Arrowhead. It's called okay. Rim of the World is actually the name of the little town. Hmm, that's interesting. Rim of yeah. the World. Okay. Um, <laughs> my thoughts go somewhere else when I hear that. But anyway, Mike, inappropriate. Um, this facility where Shelly Miscavige, the leader of Scientology's wife, Shelly, has not been seen in how many years now, Mike, in public? Oh, I don't know. 13 or something? I think yeah. it was 2007 or somewhere around there. Six, now the last, five. right. Now the last that we, we knew of Shelly was through Valerie Haney, who used to work for David Miscavige and Shelly Miscavige. Uh, directly, and who is now my one of my closest friends and assistant. Um, but Valerie was on the Aftermath program and, and said that the last time she saw Shelly, she was being taken away in a black SUV and was visibly upset. And yes. no one has seen her or heard from her since. I had filed a police report, a missing persons report, did not get any uh, information other than some statement that the LAPD put out saying it was unfounded, which would imply that they had contact with her or a legal representative, right, Mike? Because when you join the Sea Org, you do sign contracts that say that Scientology can speak on your behalf, right? Sort of, yeah. But I Mm -hmm. think in the case of Shelley, it was probably, there's probably more specific things even than that. I think that Shelley probably had... Uh, counsel who was retained on her behalf by Scientology and that, you know, at some point she was told, you've got to retain this person for your own good. And so she got given a piece of paper and signed a thing saying, okay, this person is now my lawyer. And that then gets turned into a representation by that lawyer. She's my client, and she doesn't wish to, you know, and I assure you she's doing fine. And that lawyer is probably one of those lawyers that works for Scientology a lot and takes the representations of people in Scientology as being absolutely true. You know, Ray Jeffrey mentioned this, that the lawyers that show up and in those court cases in Texas He said they're very reputable lawyers. They can only rely on what they are told. They can't Scientologists. That yeah, they can't they can't, you know, come up with some information that their client hasn't told them and Right. And they're not detectives, right? They're not detectives. Yeah. Right. So that's what's happened to Shelley. And I sincerely hope that she is okay. Like I told you when we were doing the show, I have known Shelley since she was twelve years old. Mm-hmm. I considered her someone who was a long-term friend of mine, and it's sad because I believe that she is so brainwashed at this point and so under the control of Scientology that she doesn't even know that she wants to leave. So th- there's a lot of things to overcome. Now, where Shelley uh, allegedly is at the CST, it's even harder because oh, yeah. the, the guard gate is some uh, some ways back from the actual gate, the entrance. And so to even get to that point would be a feat in itself. If somehow she did, uh, there's a house across the street, across, and this is like a highway, so there's nowhere to stop your vehicle. And so across the street is a Scientology-owned home, 
where security guards are based. And Mike, you made a an appearance on the aftermath and and showed us that. And right, uh, I I so I hope that Shelley is still alive. I have no way to to help. Uh, I did what I can do at my own expense. I hired a lawyer to try to get more information through the Public Information Act. That didn't work. So that's the answer on Shelley. I wish we had more. We had more good news to tell you, but we don't. Um, okay, let's move on to another question, Mikey. Yes. We get this asked this question a lot, too. Do you believe that David Miscavige believes in Scientology? Okay, now why did you have to pick that one? Why? <laughs> because that's such a hard question to answer. Okay. I don't know actually what the answer is. I, go, I jump back and forth from yes to no. Well, listen. And it's totally let, useless. Okay. All I right. go, well, let me help yes, you. I think he does because he's still there. And this well, is probably he, a question I can't answer. No, yeah, exactly. Okay, ready? <laughs> so so this is all you have to answer. This this will give people their answer. Okay. When you would report to David Miscavige in his robe while he was being served his breakfast on a tray and things like that, did David Miscavige ask you, how many people have we helped, Mike Rinder? No. That's okay. Easy. Are there any positives in Scientology, Mike? This is a viewer question. This is a listener question. Why do question. you keep asking me the trick ones? Like, can't we have the easy ones? All right, let's do that. Are there any positives? Are yeah. there any positives? Yes, at the outset. There are things that are positive about Scientology that are the way in which people get sucked in. Right. They are the things that are presented as we can help you with this, we can help you with that, and whatever they have, some of those things do provide help. They mm -hmm. do help people. They help people if they're having difficulty communicating with someone or if they're having some other problem in their life mm -hmm. and little pieces of information that are useful and platitudes that, that Hubbard wrote that tell you that, you know, be kind to other people, blah, 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 as long as it's not, they're not a suppressive person or whatever. Those things are positives about Scientology, and those are the things that are relied upon to attempt to get people involved in Scientology. And they're generally sort of harmless, and they are generally kind of okay and things that people couldn't agree with. And But after that, it's all downhill. Well, I would answer in this way. It's yeah. like saying, is crack, doing crack bad? Like if you just did it like once. Um, because, and that, that's probably not a great analogy, but let me, so I can answer a different way. The things that we're talking about that are quote unquote good about Scientology are things that either your parents teach you a church teaches you, a children's Bible can teach you, being in the world, getting an education, knowing, uh, getting data from real sources uh, in the fields of mental health and life and livingness. These are just basic morals, basic concepts that you're talking about that well, I would not say that there are good things in Scientology, knowing what it leads to, knowing that those good right. things are just a carrot being dangled in front of your face for in the end to to destroy you and yes. to to make you an, a person that is needing a lot of help after. So I would say absolutely not. Here's another question. Many of the execs who've been in and still may be in the hole are quite elderly. Would you please give an informed opinion on what their daily lives are now since they are not likely to be productive members due to age and infirmity? Are they being cared for? Would we even find out if they had died? Okay, well, the last part of that question, first, I doubt that we would find out that they had died mm -hmm. at, at the time that it happens. Mm -hmm. Because by historical precedent, that has not been the case. People have died, including Annie Broker and others, and nobody even knew. No family members were informed. Nothing, uh, no announcement was made. Nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just as if they ceased to exist and everybody went on with business as usual. Mm -hmm. As to 
the daily life of those people. Mm -hmm. I guess it, it, the answer to that depends on just how infirm they may be. Mm -hmm. If they are physically incapacitated, mm -hmm. then it is likely that they will be put out to pasture somewhere. Some of them get sent to, uh, you know, hospice type care if they get really ill. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just sort of kept around because they're considered to be too much of a potential liability right. if they, they escaped and spoke. Right. You know, that's the Heba Gentches of the world. The are they being president of Scientology, yep. Right. Are they mm -hmm. being looked after? Not, not, not like you, not like one would expect. They right. are being looked after in terms of making sure that they don't go off the reservation. And, you, you know, we we had that discussion with Tammy, uh, Heba Gentch's niece, mm -hmm. about how when the sheriffs went to the Golden Era property and saw Heba Gentch, he had a full-time nurse. Right. Well, we know that that person is not a nurse. Right. That may be a minder to make sure that he doesn't go weird or try and walk out the door or you know, make a phone call or do something that, that would be outside of their control. But she is not a nurse, and they right. do not have nurses there to look after those people. And honestly, I feel uh, sad for them as those people get up in age and are trapped, right. trapped like nobody else's, like – the the trap and we're talking about even... gold. We're talking about golden era productions in in the Riverside right. County, right in, uh, close to Hemet. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. And those people are trapped worse than young people because they really don't have anywhere left to go to. Most and... of them, their parents have died. Right. They, you know, they're like, and they've been so cut off from the rest of the world for so long that there is just anything outside of the Scientology world no longer exists for most of them. Okay, here's another question. JLo's father. I know I must be missing something, but isn't Jennifer Lopez's father a Scientologist? If so how can you be friends with her if she is still in communication with him, but you are an SP? Like I said, I'm confused about this whole thing, but I thought uh, this was the way that it worked. Love your podcast. So the answer, the the, the real answer is yes. Uh, Jennifer Lopez's father is a Scientologist, current Scientologist. And um, yes, per the policy of disconnection, Jennifer should have been forced to disconnect from me through her father. But because Scientology is bullshit and they say one thing, do another, and they claim disconnection doesn't exist, although it's on their own website, uh, and they also don't want to ruin any public relations with Jennifer, so they're not going to make her father do that. So where right. it works for Scientology is just destroying the average Scientologist family. But when it comes to celebrity, very different. Good answer, Mike? Perfect answer. Great. Here's another question about Tom Cruise. How involved is Tom in the day-to-day? -day? I know he's witnessed a lot. What about John Travolta? I know you don't like to talk about other celebrities, but I watched Going Clear after your last podcast, and it seems weird that John would still be in after how Spanky was treated. And then the other questions here, Mike, about this is, do you believe Nicole Kidman or Katie Holmes will ever speak out? Um, did Tom Cruise try to convert Penelope Cruz? Yes. Is Tom Cruise personally aware, exposed to the real side of it? Yes. How involved is Tom Cruise in the day-to-day? He's involved in the day-to-day -day in that he talks to David Miscavige all the time, right. like every day. Like, he and Dave are best buds. Right. So he's always hearing about what's going on in Scientology. He doesn't do any work. Like, this is sort of, I don't want to create the impression that Tom Cruise is slaving away nine in the morning until midnight at night working to expand Scientology like Sea Org members are. Mm -hmm. And I should say working futilely to expand Scientology like CEO members are. That's no, he doesn't do any of that. He, he's not involved in any heavy lifting or anything, but he is involved to the degree that he's in touch constantly with David Miscavige. 
and David Miscavige likes to use Tom Cruise as his sounding board and as a threat to Scientologists or Sea Org members in particular. So Tom Cruise is is definitely involved and a a he is what I would call a true believer, like mm-hmm. a hardcore true well, believer. Obviously, so to the extent where he hasn't seen his own daughter, because uh, Suri's mother is now labeled a suppressive person. Correct. And therefore, the connection to Suri through Katie would be a big no-no. So that is, so Tom, yes, and Tom was also given given the the job of in charge of all of us celebrities uh, of Scientology, often having meetings where he was telling us we needed to meet certain quotas to to infiltrate Hollywood. And he is seen as the Messiah. People call him Mr. Cruz. Uh, they actually, like, so far as to salute the man, like he's in the military. It's, it's very um, disconnection. There's a question about disconnection. Um, Wait, we didn't answer. Uh, there was another part oh, in the about middle John? there that... Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, Either do you about... think? Do you believe Nicole Kidman and or Katie Holmes will ever speak out? No, I don't. Unfortunately, Why? Um, I think that a part of whatever uh, agreement they made mm-hmm. in terminating their relationship with Tom and Scientology requires that they do not do that. Uh, but I don't. You know, I don't know that for sure. And I, you know, sort of hold out hope that one day either one or both will actually tell the story of what really happened and And what what their life has been like since and what they witnessed and Mm -hmm. particularly Katie and Suri and how Mm -hmm. that whole thing has gone down. I, I, you know, I don't think that either one of them are scared I don't believe that 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 their failure to speak is a fear of Scientology or even a fear of Tom. Mm-hmm. I think I think that both of them have sort of moved on with their lives and are having you know enjoyable experiences in life and just don't want this to ever come up again. That I mean that's how right. I would take it. But yeah, do Scientologists vote? Uh, yes, they do. If they're eligible, I guess. And if they, they are so desire, there is no, um, heavy, uh, demand that Scientologists vote, except if you are in a location such as the Golden Era Productions Facility mm-hmm. or Flag in Clearwater or the complex in Los Angeles, the big blue building in Los Mm -hmm. Angeles, Mm -hmm. where Scientology believes that they can actually influence elections. Right. And that they can sort of strong arm people into voting. Mm -hmm. And they, they do this all very carefully. It's all very, it's all very, uh, you know, as with everything else in Scientology, it's all very weird. Mm -hmm. They do not, overtly say you should vote for this person or that person because that is a clear-cut violation of the IRS regulations about tax-exempt religions. Oh, but I can tell you as a parishioner, Mike, when as a parishioner we were told, like we were called, I was called by many different Scientologists in the field, these are parishioners, saying we are not voting for this person because this person is pro-psychiatrist. We are not voting for this person because they are backing a person who is attacking our church and our beliefs. Uh, absolutely, so, and and yeah. it, but but just so you understand, Lee, mm-hmm. it's very carefully worded. It, uh, nobody ever says we are not voting for this person because, in those words, they mm-hmm. say Joe Schmo is mm-hmm. pro psychiatry. Right, Joe Schmo came out in support of X, Joe Schmo came out in support of Y. We're just providing you with the information to let you know, Mm -hmm. uh, making this all, making you very well aware of the actual facts about what's going on. And that is like, you know, people talk about dog whistles. Yeah. 
this is this is an elephant horn. Yeah. This is just if you say to a Scientologist, politician X supports psychiatry, you might just as well say to them, if you vote for that person, you right. are a suppressive and we will declare you suppressive. Right. So, yes, there is a lot of direction. And the other thing they do is they get individual Scientologists who are the OSA volunteers mm -hmm. who start little political action groups and they uh, have the, the back channel conversations with the people in the church who are telling them this is what we want. And then those people go out and say, as a citizen of Clearwater, mm -hmm. I am informing you right, right, that right. this and this and this is on the ballot and this is what, and this is what's good about it. And this is what's bad about it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So the word goes out. Right. There is no question. The word goes out and Scientologists generally know who they should and should not vote for and what measures on which ballot should and shouldn't be supported because they are given the, the codes to decipher them. Right. And the other thing that they do is they get politicians to show up for these phony events that they hold. Right. Oh, we're doing a veteran's... Uh, a, a commemorative event for the veterans, in, uh, the local veterans in Clearwater at the Fort Harrison, and then they invite politicians to come. Right. And they don't even tell them exactly what the whole thing is. So you get the Attorney General of Florida, Pam mm -hmm. Bondi, mm -hmm. showing up to Scientology events. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know is Scientologists are donating to her campaigns. Mm -hmm. Then you see her picture with prominent Scientologists. Mm -hmm. And then they put that out in their Freedom magazine and mm -hmm. in their promotional pieces. And pretty soon, Pam Bondi, the former Attorney General of the state of Florida, is a Scientology supporter. And whether she is or she isn't, Scientology will tell everybody that she is. Well, here's the thing, too, Mike. I have to say something. You're saying that yeah. you're not being told who to vote for. However, Valerie, you know, Valerie, my assistant yes, yes. and family member now. Yes, yes. She has told me that Sea Org members, first of all, they're not given any time to look at the candidates, right? Because you guys work from nine in the morning till midnight, seven days a week. But she said that they're, they were given 10 minutes and watched over to fill out the forms, and they told who to vote for. I, be I believe that, Leah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, Sea Org members are always somewhat in a different category than run-of-the-mill Scientologists. Right. Sea Org members, everything about their entire existence is controlled by the organization, yeah. from what they eat to when they go to bed to yeah. whether they can have sex. I mean, it's just like everything about life is controlled by the Sea organization, yeah. and it's true. They are not worried about, like, the nobody is going to go running off to the IRS and say, oh, I just got told who to vote for mm -hmm. if they're a Sea Org member. Of course. So, yeah. So they, it's, so they it's, do. They, they don't yeah. have to cover it up so much for Sea Org members. Yes, yes. And, and by the way, uh, the, this news just in, because Valerie's writing me notes as I speak. Oh. And this yes. was Trump. They were told to vote for Trump. Oh, really? Yes. Well, that, I mean, that is not surprising. Yeah. For two reasons. One, we already know that the only precinct in greater Los Angeles that mm -hmm. supported Donald Trump was the one that is right around the Scientology headquarters. Yeah. Which I'm, that by the way, I want to be clear. I'm not a political person. I don't like to tell people how to vote, who they should vote for. I, it's just not something that I do. But I'm just giving you the information that 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 this is what they are. They they are political when it serves them, right? And they do things that serve Scientology. So I just want to make that clear. So yes, they do. Yes, of course. They're, yes, and they're getting more and more involved in politics, where they're having Scientologists parishioners run for, you know, city councils, for mayors. Like, so, you know, we need to be aware of that. All right. Be vigilant. Yes. Now, I want to talk to you. Here's another question. Homosexuality. What happens if someone is homosexual in Scientology? Is it, is it a conversion strategy during auditing? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So Scientologists like to say, you know, we don't judge. They absolutely do. There's many writings from L. Ron Hubbard. You don't see many uh, gay people in Scientology. And if you do, they're suppressing it because they have to, because L. Ron Hubbard teaches that homosexuality is wrong and they don't accept it. Correct. They say and, they do. Yeah, go ahead. But 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 also there is a foundational belief mm -hmm. that homosexuality is what's called in Scientology an aberration. Yeah, that a means a departure from the straight line. Right. Is the from, a, actual from, the, from the norm. Yeah, exactly. From the norm. And yeah. that those departures from the norm, aberrations that people have, are cured, literally cured by auditing. So right. you can be cured of your aberration of being homosexual with enough auditing. Right. It's never happened, but the theory is that that's what is going to happen. Okay, what are Scientology's views on romantic relationships and marriage? I'm assuming you only date within the organization, but are members encouraged to legally marry as marriage looked upon as a legal contract or a spiritual bond? Is there sex outside of marriage? Uh, is it frowned upon? Uh, are there any consequences within the church if found out that there's an extramarital affair? Give me the dirt. That's what they say. <laughs> give me the dirt. I could tell you well, just to give you a, a from a prisoner standpoint, they yeah. don't really care about the sanctity of marriage. They don't really believe in uh, the sanctity of that. They don't believe in even family is 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 a valuable um, thing to. It's just not something that Scientology values. If you're uh, in the Sea Org, it's just you marry somebody just basically to have sex with them because you never see them. You don't. If you have children in the Sea Org, you never see them either. You don't raise your children in the Sea Org, so you don't have the same relationship that one should have with a child. But uh, extramarital affairs, they're handled like, okay, let's move on. Like, so just big deal. Like, that happened, let's move on. Okay, you rape somebody. Um, that's not okay, but, you know, we'll fix that in you one day. Am I, yeah, am I wrong? Well yeah. Well, handle your aberration with auditing. Exactly. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, you're basically told if you're a wife or a husband in Scientology, uh, if your spouse cheated on you, you're basically told, get over it. You've done it. I either this life or another life. So just get over yourself. It's not even important. Uh, relationships are the least important thing. Um, family is the least important thing in Scientology. The group, LRH says, is the most important. And that's Scientology. Right. right. Does All that answer that question? Well, it's very different if you're in the Sea Org. Okay, go ahead. Say it from the So Org. in the Sea Organization, anything that is determined to be out to D, mm -hmm. which is the Scientology terminology for extramarital affairs or uh, sexual relationships that are outside of the mores of the organization. Oh, by the way, Mike. Out to D is used as well for a girl who comes in underage and says, I had a Sea Org member or Scientologist molest me or rape me. They're like, then it's the girl went out to D. That's how it's written down in her folder. Not that a crime was committed against her. Correct. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Correct. And the, and the, in the Sea Organization, those things are forbidden. And, 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 you know, there was a whole lot of questions there about sex outside of marriage, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. In the Sea Organization... No sex outside of marriage. You have sex outside of marriage and you get found out about, then you are going to likely end up in the rehabilitation project force. Which the is the uh, punishment yeah. program to uh, get you back in line. Mm -hmm. So it's different in the C organization than it is in the like general parishioner world of Scientology. Yeah. Uh, OSA files. OSA archives, can you tell us more about that? Did OSA keep files on individuals that were separate from the general ethics folders? If yes, how was the OSA archive different? Or did OSA just keep simple copies with no difference in content? Nope, completely separate files. The Office of Special Affairs has files on everyone it has an interest in. And that means everyone who is either considered to be a threat or is a potential threat. It includes 
people who have left Scientology speaking out. It includes media. It includes law enforcement officials. It includes uh, government agencies. And OSA keeps files that uh, of information that aren't found in any other files in Scientology. The reports from private investigators following people digging into their backgrounds and their past all end up in the OSA files and nowhere else. Media clippings about people, information that is gathered from the garbage of people. And where are these files, Mike? Where are these OSA files? Well, each local Department of Special Affairs has a file or files kept on their people in their area. Copies of those are also sent to the OSA International, uh, which is uh, in Los Angeles, and there is a huge filing system there that consists of all of the information collected from all over the world and that which is generated from OSA International itself, hiring private investigators, digging into people's backgrounds, clipping media, et cetera, et cetera. There is a whole separate technology even written by Hubbard about how you keep these files and what's supposed to be contained in them, and they are not found anywhere else in Scientology. Okay. Mike, here's a question. Yeah. And, and compliment. Longtime fan, and I love the podcast. Anyway, my question. What evidence would somebody need to claim that they were the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard? <laughs> well, you know, and it's funny, right, it's a- Mike? Because it sounds crazy. But L. Ron Hubbard himself claims and written, has written policies about people dying, discarding their bodies, as L. Ron Hubbard claimed, or people claimed he discarded his body as opposed to dying, and coming back. And they're supposed to report back there's policies on which Mike, you should put on the website because it's it's delightful to to what LRH instructions are for people coming back and saying what their names are, and you have to go get their folders, right? And like get their pre-clear folders, their their counseling folders, and that's totally acceptable. There's even a picture of a young man coming back in 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 a, in a place that you should, where they talk about what happens when somebody returns. Right. And they're supposed to be L. Ron Hubbard, when he died, Sea Org members, when they died, they're supposed to take a 21 year leave of absence, but then report back. Correct. Correct. Yes. So that's L. Ron the Hubbard, motto of the Sea Organization. We correct, come we back. We come back. Right. So where's Ron? A wall. Oh, OK, because he's a bit over. He is a wall. He is okay. overdue. Okay. I'm afraid. Okay. Yes. OK, because that's I, fucked up. Yeah. 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 But what would you have to do to prove that you were Ron? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting question. I mm-hmm. think what you would have to do is um, come up with some sort of story to explain where you've been, okay. what, what's what been going on in the intervening time, okay. and um, like express or, or have some sort of intimate knowledge of things that only Ron would know. And who would that person t- t- tell that to? Miscavige? David Miscavige? Yeah, but I, my suspicion is mm. that Dave wouldn't take too kindly to that. Right. So my here's my point. That you know there was a guy that came back and claimed this. Yeah, yeah, but 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 Mike, the the point is that even if somebody did, even if I trained, like let's say you told your sons, you trained your sons, right? Or one of your sons. Okay, this is what I need you to do, right? You train them for years to know about the confidential data, only insider information, right? Things that only L. Ron Hubbard would know that you know because you were in the sewer for so long, right? And one of your sons showed up and said to David Miscavige, okay, son, time to step aside. I'm back and I'm going to take my rightful place. And thank you. Thank you for your service. Scientologists, I mean, David Miscavige would go, get the fuck out of here. Like, it, like it's not going to happen. Like, I'm the dude on the scene now. I don't really believe in this reincarnation story. And that's really the truth, that Scientologists really don't believe in this story that is that starts pretty early on in Scientology, right? That's what they sell you on. 
that you're just a body, this is just one lifetime, that you're going to go off to live many lifetimes. So where, Mike, did we agree? Well, we don't really believe in that, but that's basically what Scientology is selling. So where did we agree? That we what just do didn't believe that shit. We never believed that because we're, I was like, well, if that were true, where's such and such? Like, And I'm in Scientology. Know. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's it's like one of those things that you have to sort of put aside. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you have to kind of, you know, like, yeah, well, I maybe I maybe I haven't reached the level yet where I can fully comprehend what this means or right. how this works. But even because, if it happened, David Miscavige would be like, "Get the fuck out of here." I agree. That's why I said yeah. I didn't think you'd be th real thrilled if if Ron Two showed up. Like that goofball that showed up claiming to be L. Ron Hubbard reincarnated, who changed yeah. his name to Lafayette Ron Hubbard and had the fucking Sea Org symbol tattooed on his forehead or whatever, that former crim felon con man, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of people that believe the guy. Right, right. I, I mean, I don't know. It's I, it, I don't know. That's bizarre to me. That's just okay. totally bizarre. Here's another one. Has yeah, has yeah. has this cult ever canceled an SP order, meaning an enemy order? Yes, you and must do steps A through E. The okay, that means like so. If, if anybody actually wants to know the answer and see it full blown, you could just go to Marty Rathbun's blog and uh, go back some time where he was telling the truth about Scientology and look what he's doing today. That is somebody doing what we call A to E steps in Scientology to get back into Scientology's good graces. Scientology, in turn, for uh, the favor of turning on all of his friends, Marty Rathbun, Scientology has taken down some of their hate websites on Marty. <laughs> Very funny. Okay, Scientology Cross. Why does Scientology have a symbol of a crucifix on so many of its buildings when they don't believe in Jesus or Christianity? Why don't they just use their own symbol? Okay, do you want me to give you the Scientology PR response or the real response? The real response. Because both, well, both are in enlightening. The real well, response is yeah. because it makes Scientology look religious. Because in the U.S., or, or in the West at least, mm -hmm. a cross is equated to religious, mm -hmm. religious symbology and so, therefore, if Scientology has a cross, it sort of implies that it's religious like like all the Christian religions. Scientology cross is not a normal Christian cross. It's a weirdo cross. It's got eight other, four other points sticking out of the middle. Oh, okay, because you, you so, said something different. So, so Scientology's cross has eight points, and that, right. and that, is, that, is, that means their own thing. Well— Yes, it means but, but it. And that's why I, I said the PR yeah. response to this from yeah. Scientology is this represents the eight dynamics in Scientology. No. And okay, so here's the real answer. Nobody wants to hear that. Here's the real answer. To appear like a real church that believes in God. They I don't. I gave you that one already. That's the best answer you could have given. All right, <laughs> Scientology in Russia. Are they currently completely banned? I saw some videos, but I'm not sure if that's still the same situation or if somehow the cult made its way back. I don't think they've made their way back, and I do think that they are currently banned, although I'm not sure that that means that they are actually not operating. I think that they are in some ways operating. I think there's even some people that are in prison. Now, I just want to say I do not agree with how the Russian government has approached the subject of Scientology. I don't think it's right to just burst in there and arrest them on no charges and keep people in prison for no reason. All right. So, Mike, here's one. It's, it's going to sound weird, but um, could you tell us Scientology's policies on killing suppressive persons, people's dogs, and your experience with Miscavige ordering the killing of dogs? I mean, we, we, we have heard I this haven't. story over and over again, um, and it is just coincidence that uh, from uh, this for part, we've heard this many times, that people's dogs all of a sudden were poisoned or, or died uh, once they started speaking out against Scientology.
that that is true. I don't I don't think Mike's ever been directed to kill a dog, but you've No, but my answer to this has always been Leah. The people that get hired by Scientology, the private investigators, mm -hmm. do a lot of stuff that is not that there is a lot of nod nod wink wink. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need this done, we need that done. How they go about doing it, we don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. We just want the result. Right. We're paying for a result. We expect a result. What you do to get it, we're not even going to say what you do to get it. We just, just sort of ignore it. And and given the acts that have been taken by private investigators and Scientologists acting on behalf of Scientology against people who have been declared fair game, mm -hmm. I have no I, – it is just too coincidental – Right. For all of these things to have just happened as a coincidence. Right. Has have is there a policy that says to do this? No. But is there a policy that says that they may be tricked, lied, sued, or anything may be done to them, or that R two forty five should be used and shoot them in the head? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right. killing a pet, who knows? Right. Okay, here's another one, Mike. Celebrities. What, in your opinion, would it take for a celebrity to leave? Some bad experience or an experience bad enough that mm -hmm. it affected them personally and that, like, the same for everybody. It may not be the same thing for everybody, mm -hmm. but ultimately there is something in the experience that they have in Scientology that is like the final straw. Right. That just pushed me over the edge, and then they start questioning. And the instant you begin to question is the instant that you will ultimately get yourself out right. because that is the first step. What right. it what that takes? Well, that is I don't for know. some people because some would argue, uh, and I have I have certainly said this. You would think that the things that have already happened uh, would have been a reason for certain celebrities to leave and they didn't. And so you just never know what it, what it takes for somebody to their tipping point. Um, right. and everybody's different. Listen, guys, thank you for these questions. <laughs> they, they are amazing. And we're going to get to another, uh, episode where we take more questions and answers. Uh, it'd be great one day if we could actually talk to people, you know, where they yes. could like call in and we could talk to them and they could say like, that's not the question I asked. This Leah just went on her own. <laughs> tangent but leah that's great but what i actually asked was such and such anyway thank you for listening till next time love you mikey love you lee bye bye